When the original Xbox was released, it shipped with the same standard definition composite video cables that had been the standard for the previous generation of consoles. However, Microsoft also sold a box that outputted high quality component video as well as digital audio. This HD pack allowed people to access progressive scan resolutions for almost every game in the Xbox's library, and the graphics in many of those games still hold up today, almost 20 years later. Since you'll always want to try to avoid using composite video on modern TVs, let's check out some easy ways to take advantage of those progressive scan signals. This video is going to show some of the easiest and most cost-effective ways to display your original Xbox on modern flat-screen TVs. Before I begin, I'd like to take a quick minute to remind everybody that RetroRGB is kept alive almost entirely by support services such as Patreon and Floatplane. In order for these videos, as well as the behind-the-scenes research and development that goes into them to continue, we'll need your support. Please check out the links in the description and consider signing up for even the minimum amount because every little bit helps. Okay, now on to ways of using your Xbox. If your TV already has component video inputs, one easy solution is using the official Microsoft High Definition Component Video Box and a set of high quality component video cables. You'll need to make sure you use good quality component cables though, or you'll definitely get interference on the screen. I'm showing the HD Retrovision cables here, which are excellent and available right from Amazon. Alternatively, you could use high quality third party Xbox component cables, but unfortunately, all the best ones that I know about, such as these monster cables, are no longer manufactured. You can find them used on eBay, but all the new Xbox component cables still available have been pretty low quality, at least the ones I've tested. Once you've connected the cables, enter the Xbox menu, set the output to widescreen, and enable both 480p and 720p not 1080i. While 1080i is technically a higher resolution, it's not a progressive scan signal and will either not look as good as 720p on a digital display or add a lot of lag to the signal. Or both. There's only about 20 games out of a thousand that don't support progressive scan, so the rest of the Xbox library will default to the highest resolution they support. As a note, more than half the Xbox library only supports a 4x3 resolution, but you'll still want to set the Xbox to widescreen mode when using it on flat screen TVs, as I just showed. Also, don't make the same mistake I made in this footage. See, many TVs remember different aspect ratios for each resolution, so even though I set my TV's aspect ratio correctly when in the Xbox's 480i mode, when Sega GT started in 480p 16x9, I should have reset it again. Sorry for the mistake, but at least we could use it as an example of what can go wrong, as Sega GT should be filling the whole screen, since it's one of the 400-ish games that supports a native 16x9 resolution. Actually, about 50 of those even output 720p. Here's an example of how good a native 720p game looks through a quality output solution. Pretty awesome, right? So overall, using the Xbox's component video output is the best solution to get the highest quality signal out of it, and you might even already have some of the cables or things required in order to get it working. But what if your TV doesn't have component video inputs? If your TV doesn't have component video inputs, you could use a device that converts the signal to HDMI. All of the caveats of the previous solution apply. Cheap knockoff cables will result in a very poor picture with lots of interference. Also, the converter you use matters too, but luckily there's a few cheap ones out there that work great, and I've personally tested and proved that they don't add any lag to the signal as well. Check the description for links, but most only cost around $20. If you're a retro gamer and already own an open source scan converter, you could just use that as well. I wouldn't recommend buying one of these scalers just for use with an Xbox, but if it's already a part of your setup, it's a great choice and even offer some good interference filters on all resolutions. Also, if you're lucky enough to have a compatible TV, you could use its ability to double 480p to 960p for an even sharper output. This solution is really cheap if all you need is the component to HDMI converter, but if you don't have any of the other equipment, there are easier ways and cheaper ways to accomplish the same thing. 
You can find plenty of cheap Xbox HDMI cables on Amazon that range from about $25 to $40. Using one of these is essentially the same as using cheap, unshielded component cables through a low-quality HDMI converter, but all built into one cable. Now, while the quality of these cables are low, and the interference you see here is pretty obvious, as long as you buy a cable that just converts the signal from analog to digital in ADC without any scaling, it shouldn't add lag or hurt the image much more than this. I'd strongly suggest staying away from any cable that advertises scaling of any kind, as they're almost surely using a scaling chip designed for TV signals, not video games, which will add lag. Those, as well as ones from the same brands designed for older consoles, are pretty bad and should be avoided altogether. As long as you use a cheap cable that's just an analog to digital converter, your experience certainly won't be ruined, but with these signals being stretched to around four times their original size on a 4K TV, it's easy to notice the difference between a clean solution and a bad one, and you will notice the interference. If you're on a budget, these are okay to use. However, there is a better solution for not much more money. One company has been working on their own version of an Xbox HDMI cable that's designed to have the highest quality analog to digital conversion possible. It's not just the equivalent of the HD pack and quality cables though, as it has a 165 megahertz front end filter and the digital filter for the 10-bit ADC is generated from the clock frequency. Now what this translates to in English is that this converter is designed for the exact frequencies of the Xbox and isn't just a generic ADC. It might not be a huge difference over the high quality shielded solutions I spoke about before, but it's a difference any hardcore Xbox fan would appreciate. Along with the video conversion, the cable also integrates the Xbox's digital audio, allowing for a great solution overall. It's compatible with all resolutions as well, meaning this cable might be the best plug-and-play solution available for the original Xbox. And my favorite part? It's only $50. Basically the same price as just a used HD pack on eBay. While it's not as cheap as some of the low-end solutions, it's certainly priced fairly and is definitely worth it for Xbox fans. Internal mods are always going to be much more complicated than plug-and-play solutions, but I wanted to take a moment to talk about them just to clarify what to expect. First, there's some internal mods already available which put the analog to digital video converter right on the motherboard. While this is about the same quality as an external solution, it makes for a clean install, so some people who enjoy modding their consoles may prefer this over a plug-and-play solution. Any console mods that'll make the biggest difference in signal quality will be digital to digital HDMI mods that pull the signal before it's ever converted to an analog signal at all. Mods like these are usually very hard to install, but allow for the highest possible signal quality since there's never any analog interference added. Also, any scaling or manipulation of the image will have better results since it's staying in the digital realm the whole time. None of these digital to digital mods are available yet, but we'll keep everyone informed on their progress on our weekly podcast, posted every Wednesday. Also, you could definitely expect a follow-up video when prototypes of those arrive. My recommendation for what solution to choose will be totally based on what equipment you already own. First, if you already have a quality component video solution for your Xbox, or plan on using both HDMI and analog displays, then direct component or through a converter is the best option. If your target devices are only HDMI, then I'd definitely recommend the adapter from Chimeric Systems, as it's fairly priced and does an excellent job. Casual Xbox gamers, or I guess people who are waiting for the internal mods to be released, will probably find the cheap solutions on Amazon good enough. Those cables are far from perfect, but as long as you don't try to use ones that scale, it shouldn't ruin the experience. Also, there's many other Xbox solutions available that I didn't have time to cover in this video, but they all fall under the same basic categories. Analog to digital conversion that's either done well or just done okay. This video is just meant to get you started, but there's a ton of options available for the original Xbox, ranging from custom firmware to emulation to even forcing certain resolutions through RGB SCART. One very quick note about SCART cables and Xbox consoles, you could only get a 480i signal with a SCART cable on an unmodified console, and there won't even be an option to enable progressive scan in the menu. Modded consoles will even allow you to send sync on green over SCART, 
allowing an easier flow for some people's setups who are already totally SCART based. All of that's for another video though. That's it for this time. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also, I want to send a special thanks to all the people who support this channel on Patreon and Floatplane, as your support is keeping all this research alive. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.